Alrighty, hello every folks, and good morning, welcome to a very excited uh, kind of review, uh, post-game thoughts, whatever kind of thing for Sword of Convalaria. So, I gotta say, when I first went into it, I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd heard that there was, you know, all this mobile game thing attached to this game. Um, I'd heard that, you know, it had a single player, but... Honestly, previous experience in this space over games that said that they had a single player and attached mobile game elements has generally gone pretty poorly, but man oh man oh man oh man, I'm, I'm ecstatic over how this game turned out. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So just know I will be going through my route in general as far as the story went, uh, kind of explaining everything that happened along the way. Um, because, uh, I, I think it's kind of important for context. I don't think this is a game that you can necessarily spoil that much. Similarly, uh, kind of like how you really can't spoil a Tactics Ogre, uh, playthrough, because it's probably gonna play out differently on your playthrough. Um, it's not necessarily the what happens, it's the how it happens that's typically the more interesting part. So, um, let's go ahead and get started here, uh, kind of discussing everything. So, first and foremost, was this game made for cash, or was it made because somebody cared? Frankly, the amount of detail absolutely everywhere it just makes me feel that this was a, a labor of love first, and everything else was made so that it could exist. Like as far as I've as as far as I've seen, while there may be the occasional thing that I'm not super, uh, you know, super excited about, like for example, this lady and dumb haircut archer guy. I could do entirely without three of the four main characters uh, that are showing up on the title screen. Um, but as far as everybody else, like, there was, there is so much love in here that it's kind of ridiculous. This is actually, uh, this genuinely seems to have more care and attention to detail than many other things I've seen in the space. I mean, hell, I appreciate the little detail here that uh, even, uh, even over here, Cole's cat actually made it to heaven. Uh, anyway, um... Let's go ahead and discuss. Uh, so, so one of the things I'd heard, uh, specifically from uh, Titanium Legman's review, uh, was a notion that was out there that this that the story in this game, uh, for those that didn't know, it's an adaptive story. It changes depending on what you do, say, how you fight, all that kind of thing. Again, very Tactics Ogre-esque. That's what got me excited about it. Um, um, and essentially, uh, in that uh, in that vein, uh, there was a notion out there that you were locked into a bad ending, or that you had to go back in New Game Plus to achieve good endings, or to save your faction buddies, or whatever else. Um, and I gotta say, my personal experience was not that. That's the main reason that I kind of want to spoil a, a what happened on my particular playthrough here, to explain that I don't think that's the case. In fact, there was one explanation that was uh, given to me by uh, one of the subscribers to the channel here, um, the guy that was very insistent that I go and play this in the first place, which I will say, mixed bag opinion, because I'm pretty sure it was the same person that said to go try War of the Visions. Still upset about that. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and, uh, and discuss here a little bit. Um, uh, and yeah, Adonis, that was a little, uh, little bit of a jab. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue. <laughs> um, okay. So here's what happened on my particular playthrough. We're just going to go through the story here, um, just uh, in whatever order this happens to uh, to pop up. Hopefully, it's in the right way this time, because uh, uh, last time it was uh, it was ordering it based off. No, 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 no. We need to reorder this. For some reason, the default order on this is not this. Uh, or sorry, it, it's not based on uh, when you get them. It's so, like, here we go, we need to resort it for story time, <laughs> which I guess is weirdly fitting. Anyway, so, uh, so yeah, we're, we're just going to go through event by event and discuss what I saw along the way. Um, but the way that they described the system to me was something more similar to the FF10 system, uh, which you might say, wait a minute, that game was, non was completely linear, what are you on about? Yeah, but imagine if you mix that with... I don't want to say it's like Tactics Ogre-esque in terms of exactly how many splits there are, but closer to something like a triangle, uh, where there are... Actually, no, actually, I think it's kind of a middle ground between the two, because it's more splits than triangle, but not as much as Tactics Ogre. Um, anyway, let's... Uh, so, the way that my understanding was that uh, you had a sort of, like, personal reputation type of gauge with each character, and depending on how you interacted with them or whatever else, uh, you typically would see results playing out differently because uh, for example again in, in Legman's review there um, what was uh, what was mentioned was that you would again not be able to save your faction buddy everything would just go wrong in my personal case I and I think I know why this might be the case um, they ended up surviving it felt like a golden route ending to me um, I don't know how much better of an ending you could realistically have to the whole scenario so let's go ahead and continue on 
So, the beginning was the same as everybody as everybody else. So you start off with your uh, departure there. Uh, you start off with the state funeral, and you start off uh, getting your town. Uh, from there, you get introduced to all of your main characters. And again, it's still funny to me that you've got uh, what's again dumb dumb haircut guy, uh, you know, cheery uh, shield bash girl, um, and uh, and lady cloud over there that all show up as like here's your main cast, and then. For the most part, they're just kind of on the bench for most of the story. Like they show up to do stuff, but it—I honestly, to my mind, uh, with exception to to Cloud Lady, uh, I feel like they could have been cut out entirely, and it would have made no difference. <laughs> but again, that's that's for me personally. So, uh, so all right, Boss Lady ends up leaving. That leaves you in charge, and then uh, we get into where the actual disagreements start. Uh, so you start off with. Uh, with finding out uh, that there's a, a religion in the town that's going and uh, healing the sick, as it were. Um, essentially, it, it's interesting that as far as the religion goes, they actually went from multiple different angles, where they have the sort of historical uh, uh, Catholic Church, more or less, as far as as far as the greater uh, kind of uh, uh, papal states there. Very, very clear uh, a nod to them there. Uh, whereas Samantha herself there, the faction leader, was interestingly enough, more a representative of classic Christianity. So, for those unfamiliar of the difference, um, the Catholic Church as it is in most places today, like the actual political version, is nothing to do with what the original uh, original religion was like. Uh, like, there were old letters from Rome and whatever else where they're like, we captured a bunch of their people, they did nothing wrong to us, we tortured several of them to death, and then they offered us dinner. These are just really nice people, and they're going around helping people. Why are we going after them? <laughs> just, like, confused uh, confused letters from Roman governors and whatever else. Like, these just seem to be people that are crazy about being nice to people. That's more or less where it started, and then all of the crazy, like, pillaging and, you know destroying stuff in the name of your god stuff came later. <laughs> so, just so you know, there's a difference there. But it's cool to see uh, the dynamic between the two, um, because that's the entire Papal States arc, if you go there, is that difference between the two, and you don't see that come up that often. It, it's oftentimes per portrayed as just like, you, you gotta take all of it as a bundle or nothing else, and Samantha's route in this case, the one that I ended up going on, is about separating those two notions out, and that's really cool to me. Um, because again, I, I grew up uh, around Catholicism, I ended up falling out of the whole idea there after seeing the, you know, wider version of the whole thing was so much different from what was kind of, you know, taught in Catholic school and whatever else. And, uh, and other stuff in the background too, but like, it, it's just interesting to see that dynamic there, but we'll get back to it. Uh, you meet this guy that is totally a merchant and not a plot character, and we totally won't shoot him in the face later. Um, let's see, this, uh, I forget what's going on here, uh, and then we get to the, uh, disease arc. So, I don't know how this plays out on other routes, uh, but early on there is a disease that starts popping up around the city, uh, and once it ends up progressing, people turn into mutants and start attacking people. This is effectively, uh, like the Las Plagas disease from, uh, Resident Evil 4. Uh, in all ways, more or less. It's just people get the thing, they eventually catch it, they're all mind-controlled by their cult leader, um, and then they're going around attacking people. But uh, it starts off as a sickness, nobody can seem to cure it. Um, it's, again, a very interesting dynamic to see medieval Resident Evil 4, and now you can deal with all of them using halberds. Um, it's, again, just, it, it felt cool to me, but... Throughout this whole thing, you're given a bunch of different options over who to side with for help, because you know something's coming, but you don't know what it is. Um, like, you know that uh, the cult is growing and expanding, but there's a bunch of little choices over kind of when to shut them down and where, whether to do stuff about this, that, or the other. Um, and as time goes on, you end up uh, quietly picking a, a sort of a side to go with during that time. I believe... From, I don't know if this is if this is accurate because some people have told me a, a few different things, but I believe one of the bad outcomes you can get here is if you don't end up making friends with anybody and then just simply get overrun uh, towards the tail end of the chapter. Now, that being said, though, uh, in my particular case, I was noticing that uh, while the uh, the union, uh, basically you got the the knights union and you got the um, uh, whoever the hell the other guys are. Uh, let's see, the Knights Union were the guys that got blamed for everything, and then the other ones are basically the old Aryan government, um, the sort of established powers that, uh, that be there. Um, and in terms of the kind of Eria faction there, they're 
they're kind of the de facto good guys, but they also lose constantly. The Church was the only one actually seemingly helping everybody, even though the wider organization refused to accept uh, uh, medicine in this particular case, while the combination of the two was the only thing that was actually helping anybody, so I figured, you know what? That sounds like a pretty decent uh, side to go with. Uh, maybe there's a way to fix that situation. It seems to be the only one that's actually helping, because during this whole time, we just see the Knights Union is going and doing spy stuff in the background. It's like, dude, we got our own problems. We who's got time to deal with the spy drama? Anyway... Something about furries happens, we ignore those, and then uh, we uh, we end up seeing this, which, this cracked me up. This was one of those scenes that really made me turn around on the story. Uh, because the uh, lady that this scene was about here um, ends up being, um, becoming more plot important as time goes on, but effectively, it's a character that was a fairly, uh, fairly annoying, like, saved, uh, you know, saved maiden in distress uh, archetype. Um, and everybody just completely turns on her. She's like, oh, you know, woe is me, I'm, I'm just a, a working little girl here. And then everyone's just trying to ditch her the entire time, and it cracked me up. <laughs> because throughout, uh, throughout all of it, it seemed like they would just go down this route of, oh, you gotta hug and be friends, and everybody's get along, getting along. You know, the typical anime kind of stuff that I'm pretty sure everyone's sick of by now. Um... And, you know, they just toss her to the frickin' walls, like, yeah, <laughs> we're just completely disowning this lazy lady, like, we got nothing. Uh, we got nothing to do with her, she's your problem now. So, you gotta love the sheer coldness going on there. Now, the amount of variation here tells me that there's quite a lot of different things that can play out here. Um, I will mention, though, um, that there, like, the, what I was mentioning about ignoring the furries here and this whole section right here, there's a lot of scenes that happen in the town that it doesn't actually go out of its way to tell you about. Most of the important stuff, the plot important stuff, it'll pop up as the next thing that you're supposed to do. Um, but uh, from what I've seen, a lot of the uh, kind of interesting side stories, they just sort of pop up in the town as little uh, uh, conversation marks. Uh, they, they don't actually uh, necessarily point you to the next waypoint for every one of those. Okay. So at that point, uh, there was a agreement reached eventually uh, with uh, uh, with uh, uh, Samantha here, the uh, uh, the sort of almost at, at the moment they were the the representative for the papal states, um, but they and eventually end up being a breakaway faction of their own. Um, but at this point, we have an agreement between the uh, the sort of rebel faction uh, with uh, Etta here. That's this uh, this one over here with a scarf and lantern. Uh, whereas again, this is this one, and then this lady will become relevant later. But, as I mentioned earlier, there is a disease rolling through the town at this point, and the only thing that seems to have any noticeable effect whatsoever is a combination of all the healing stuff from the church there, as well as the uh, concoctions of the scientist annoyances going and brewing up. Um, this scene, again, was one of those moments that just kind of hit me here. This whole, uh, may there be no pain in heaven scene, like, very, very solidly done. Just this excellent build-up where it's like you got one of the most annoying people in the story, you got one of the most likable people in the story, and everybody's working together to save this, you know, fairly likable kid. Granted, they're a bit of an archetypal kid, but they're always talking about going to go meet their mom and dad, and they, they need to go find their mom and dad, and you find the remains of those mom and dad over the course of several missions. Um essentially having been turned into these uh, mutant creatures that we were looking at earlier. Um and they like, they're going to go meet them, they're going to go meet them, and then finally they refuse their medicine on the last day. They're like, no, no, I can finally go meet them. And that's just such a good gut punch. Like, man, the way that that's put together is, seriously, like, kudos. That That's that's pretty damn legit. Um, anyway, uh, so, as stuff progresses on, uh, eventually the cult is uh, is run out of, uh, out of the mining pit uh, where they're based out of, um, and the town is relatively safe-ish. I... I mentioned this in a previous video, but I love that during this whole time, every time there's a new event, the stability meter that you've built up at the very start of the game is slowly ticking down uh, with everything that goes wrong. Um, it's just cool to, to see that little narrative moment. Anyway, so we're introduced to the wider Papal States faction there after going to go meet them, um, and then uh, we uh, we end up seeing, uh, seeing this guy doing whatever the hell he's doing off in the background. So, at this point... The job that was given by the Papal States there is to defend this uh, this prince guy, uh, part of the old royal family. Uh, so we're supposed to be protecting him from various assassination attempts and whatnot, and that's basically what we end up doing. However, uh, throughout this whole thing, the uh, uh, 
the uh, the bishop here, uh, this lady with a crown, uh, ends up uh, going and uh, giving a... How far is this going to go into... Okay, it's not going to go into everything here. So it, this is skipping a few sections, but basically uh, what it ends up doing is uh, giving you a job to go assassinate several political leaders uh, on the other factions. So you got uh, uh, representatives uh, from the Knights Union and the old uh, uh, Aryan government there. They were supposed to be getting together for some peace talks, and basically your job is to go in with another mercenary team and kill them both. And I got the sense here that there's the option to maybe let them go, or go easy on them, or something, but no, we just brutalized the hell out of that guy. Um, apparently he was that merchant guy from earlier. He, he was plot relevant now. but. I love the fact that they that they actually pulled a bit of a switcheroo here, because it seemed like it was going to be a War of the Visions kind of thing, or a Triangle Strategy kind of thing, where they're like, oh, look, you won the fight, but oh, not really, they're going to escape. Um, and no, every single time, they, it's like they were making fun of those scenes, because every single time, they're like, oh, no, you know, here's this guy escaping from some of your basic soldiers only to then get, like, shot multiple times with crossbows and your main character pops out while they're on the ground and blast them in the face with a fireball. Like, <laughs> dude, yes, exactly. That's what I was here for. Thank you for dedicating to my terrible decisions. Anyway, um, so yeah, we, we end up uh, going and assassinating, uh, assassinating everybody there. Um, and we get a little bit of bad news that boss lady from before ain't coming home. Uh, she was just sort of found in the streets after this whole conflict. So... After that, uh, there's a surprisingly... Uh, one of the scenes that actually gets called back the most was this one over here uh, with uh, with Cole. Uh, so by this point, we've had some interactions with his boss. Uh, it's this other mercenary captain guy, the, the guy that was handling the other half of those assassinations from before. And in his particular case, he's, um, uh, he, he's essentially... Uh, well, I say, actually, no, she, what am I saying? Uh, she is a, a assassin bodyguard of sorts, and it seems like they're just some, like, Tonberry-type situation. <laughs> that they're just running around shanking stuff. And it turns out, no, she's basically... Uh, it's more of a uh, Joel and Ellie kind of situation between those two. So, uh, so there ends up being a moment where you end up deciding whether to dedicate a moment or your entire day to petting this cat. There is only one correct decision. Let's go ahead and move on. Um, actually, surprisingly enough, this is, again, the cat that shows up in heaven, and again, it's surprising to see that uh, that this cat is mentioned like four or five <laughs> more times throughout the story. Everyone loved this damn cat. Um, all right. At which point we find out, oh no, homeless annoying lady is actually a princess or something, so she ends up uh, going and uh, sh getting shipped off for that reason. And this is when the story starts achieving more of a split, uh, where they, they have several back-to-back -back moments where just like, again, it said in uh, Legman's review there, um, there were a lot of moments where it felt like things were going to uh, going to go wrong, but there was a way to address them. So, uh, so for example, uh, there's several riots that end up breaking out back to back, and essentially during dialogue they mention, okay, maybe there's a way to, to essentially deal with only the uh, conspirators here and not do any actual damage to the populace. And so you basically have all kinds of uh, previous factions that you've dealt with before that are getting riled up uh, to go attack you. Because politically, at this point, uh, the Union got blamed for those assassinations from before, um, and there's a just a, lo a lot of chaos uh, going around where essentially the old Aryan government and the Papal States uh, join together to go uh, just absolutely stomp the hell out of the, uh, the Union here. Um, it does feel like it skipped over a bunch of scenes here, actually. <laughs> Now that I think about it, because there's a lot of stuff that happens here. Very summarized version. Uh, Union gets absolutely stomped. Uh, their leader ends up uh, running away, um, presumably into exile. I love the fact that he looks like uh, Lance Tartaros. He escapes like Lance Tartaros. <laughs> like, oh, you understand nothing, and I'm out. And he just basically hops on a boat and just departs from the story entirely. <laughs> so, welcome back, Tardy. Welcome to another universe. Um... But uh, anyway, uh, so let's see, what happened during this time? So there was what seemed to be a redemption arc, or at least a come-be-our-buddy arc uh, for Gloria. That's the sort of faction buddy for the Union. Um, let's see, we shot her like 50 times with arrows and she died, so that's how that turns out. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know if there's a way to save her there. It felt like there was. Um, 
but enough people wrote comments that I need to try and save them in the story that I decided to do the total opposite. Um, anyway, so, uh, let's see what ends up happening from there. Uh, let's see, dudes were assassinated, lost the boss lady, paper, or, let's see, Union gets crushed. Um, eh, Union gets busted, that'd probably be the, the better way to put it. But upon getting back, uh, the Papal States basically goes and announces, Hey, guess what? It's time! <laughs> Nobody expected the, uh, the, you know, the, the Papal States takeover at this point. Um, so they decide that they're just gonna try and take over everything, and put you in charge of going and suppressing everybody for that reason, which ends up causing even more chaos. Um, at which point, uh, that's that's the moment when things start really going wrong. And so, like, for example, there is a, a riot in the streets, and there's a bunch of uh, King's Army members that are going and uh, getting everybody going. And it's interesting because there's several back-to-back -back fights where there's this tricky thing of essentially crowd control while doing a lot of uh, kind of uh, unit sniping, as it were. You gotta be really specific about your area of effect attacks, uh, really specific with your snipes and whatever else, uh, use uh, various means to go block off different routes, screw with the AI. Like, in in my personal case, there was a, a map, for example, with a staircase going down the middle, and I started noticing uh, that by moving a unit back and forth with that staircase, you could actually change the route uh, that the uh, enemy uh, units, like the actual ones you needed to go for, we're taking through the map, so I could essentially funnel all of, all of the uh, uh, crossbow guys over to one side uh, that were going and attacking us, and all the King's Army guys on the other side. So it was very difficult, but eventually managed to get through all of these back-to-back -back fights uh, without losing any of the civilians. And I gotta say, those fights were genuinely tricky, and at this point I want to point out that the number of mechanics that they keep introducing throughout this entire game is jaw-dropping! Like, the way that they constantly reinvent the formula is a serious breath of fresh air. Even if you if you never touch any of the other monetization stuff whatsoever, the single player by itself is absolutely worth your time. Just for the sheer mission variety alone, we've had uh, cases where you weren't even you weren't even in, uh, piloting your own units. Uh, we had cases where you specifically had to take out some units and leave others. Uh, cases where you specifically had to, uh, for example, uh, uh, one of those uh, rioting things was uh, where there was essentially uh, bandits, uh, bandits and some traitors, and you had to kill off the bandits while going and only wounding the traitors so that they could be captured. Um, again, the number of variations that they do on all of these different things has... It, it stayed throughout the entire game, even up until the very final fight. It constantly kept pumping out new variations, just interesting uh, one-off events on fights and whatever else. Um, fights where you started off with buffs or debuffs or enemy units were going and boosting each other in some way. Hell, I, I, I could go on for like a frickin' hour on just the final fight alone. It's wild to me just how much they do on Mission Variety here, so absolutely wonderful there. Anyway, anyway, so going back to the route here. So we get to a point where, throughout all of this, uh, I got the sense that if you did end up just kind of burning the place to the ground, uh, that Samantha probably would end up going and st uh, sticking with the Papal States, but instead, in this particular section, uh, she ended up uh, sort of becoming... It, it sort of ended up being a power couple thing uh, between the main character and her, though I will say it is consistently weird to me <laughs> to, uh, to look at these scenes and, like, I went with the girl main character because it's something different from the usual, and the main character in this one looks so much like Sarah, no, it's not even funny. Um, uh, but yeah, it's weird to see these uh, scenes look different uh, from what I remember. Uh, but yeah, it sort of became a power couple dynamic between them two. Uh, resulting in them finally having a conversation where she's like, okay, I think I got a general purpose plan here on maybe how to kind of defy the church here and maybe get everybody organized if if you're on board with it. And then they just kind of have this uh, the scene where they're like, okay, we're just kind of going to roll the dice on this, hope for the best. We got some allies here, we got some allies here. If this ends up working out, how about we just sort of all agree to just retire from whatever this outcome is a year from now, uh, which ends up getting called back to later. Anyway, uh, so it turns out that uh, that there was some stuff that everybody was going after. Uh, during those previous political assassinations a little while ago, there was a thing that uh, Boss Lady that died was trying to find. I'll admit, I have no frickin' clue what this was all about. It felt like they were building up to some big reveal here. I don't know what it was, because <laughs> they're like, Oh, we're gonna find out the truth of what happened in Waverend City. 
But the truth was, we we did that. <laughs> so is that the truth they were going for? Because that's not much of a reveal. It was like, hey, we got the two people that did the conspiracy, and we're going to reveal the conspiracy to ourselves? What? <laughs> So that was kind of goofy. I think there was a translation issue there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, uh, I'm assuming it was maybe the uh, the lab after it that was supposed to be the actual reveal. Because after this, it turns out that, yeah, the Papal States is... The Papal States was Dark Light. Uh, kind of. Sort of. Um, so, so after that, uh, there's several back-to-back -back missions where you go and wipe out all their secret labs and things. At which point... Uh, like, I was planning, uh, my original plan here was essentially to take the, uh, uh, previous, uh, previous government here that had managed to lose every fight that they were in, and just kind of burn it all to the ground and see what happened, because, you know, I always try to cause chaos in these games on a first playthrough. Um, in this particular route, though, it, it kind of accidentally resulted in what seemed like a golden ending, though, because the original original person kind of learned their lesson here, came to power, um, and then ended up working with uh, uh, with this uh, Samantha person there to go and essentially take out their old faction. Uh, they end up revealing all the information over all of the secret labs and things, um, the fact that they were turning children into Resident Evil monsters, and yeah. I, I do like that they actually called, they actually gave a reason for her to care outside of the this is just terrible thing. Uh, because with uh, with Sam's whole character arc here, their whole deal has been taking care of people, doing humanitarian stuff, and running an orphanage. They were an orphan. They were raised as an orphan. They knew other orphans. And so, essentially running this kind of on-the-road uh, orphanage wherever they go is their whole deal. Every time that you see them, they're going and they're taking care of kids. They're taking care of needy people and essentially just constantly doing humanitarian work everywhere they go. Um... And so, for example, when there is this reveal that some of these orphans that they were taking uh, that they were taking care of had gone to this lab, that's kind of what ends up splintering her into her own faction of like, yeah, it's time to just go, you know, burn this shit to the ground, <laughs> which I really appreciated as a twist there, uh, because it took something that they'd been building up the entire game and finally made it pay off. And this might have been a really like sketchy tragedy if she hadn't gone down that route. So I love that they uh, that they did that. Um, so ultimately, you know, this ends up kind of going where you think it's going to go. Everybody teams up to go kill off all of the uh, bad guys in this case, and uh, she ends up taking over her faction. At which point, uh, they, um, at, at which point, uh, the guy that actually runs it, who we've never actually seen up to this point, is still kind of a dick, but she still essentially converts the entire local area into doing humanitarian work all the time. And the and then the two decide to go and essentially take this more or less Red Cross mission that they're doing and take it abroad. And that's the ending that I got here. Um, so, to my mind, like, that is about as golden ending of a golden ending as you can get. This, everything about this, from the scale of it to the amount of mechanics and whatever else, felt basically like a, uh, like a one-up of the Golden Rod from Triangle Strategy, uh, which was interesting. Um, so I really love that. Uh, also, hang on. Is actually going to show this. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and let this conversation play out. So yeah, uh, so yeah, I, I really, really appreciated that. Um, how do I get this to slow down, though? Where is the slow down button? Uh, oh, I guess they do let you redo the dialogue and whatever else. Anyway, okay, whatever. We'll, we'll skip it. I thought I was just going to play stuff. My bad. So okay, let's talk new mechanics, because I the ending fight to this was really cool in my eyes. Because how exactly do you have a fight uh, between this person that's trying to steer their religion in a new direction and the old one that's, you know, trying to take over everything and whatever else? Obviously, you have a big old, uh, <clears throat> big old friggin' deity war. And how do you do this? They actually call back to the fact that you've been using their facilities to go give uh, blessings to your units the entire time to constantly have them buffing each, uh, each other's teams back and forth using this, this same mechanic. So you per get permanent versions of all of those buffs during that fight as they're going and essentially just, you know, violently talking it out or what have you. And it's like, oh, you now all of your units are immune to debuffs. Now all of them are immune to, uh, uh, like, all of them have re-raised all of a sudden. All of them have permanent 20% uh, defensive boosts. <laughs> just like, it's like, you get a buff and you get a buff and you get a buff. It's really cool to see the, like, the main thing that the faction was known for uh, being applied in that way. And I really hope that the other two uh, factions have something similar 
because that was such a cool way to do it. I loved that. The fight before that in the mines, uh, where the they're, essentially the church is trying to blow up the mines and effectively self-destruct the rest of the country so they can take over it. The, like, the way that you have all of the factions coming in for the whole big last-minute buddy team-up, as it were, the sheer scale on the, of that fight was legitimately more than I've seen in even, like, classic Fire Emblem or something. Like, we're talking about, I think, like, 60, 70, maybe 80 units on the map at one time, <laughs> all just beating the shit out of each other. Like, it was awesome! It was legitimately, I, again, I, I'm pretty sure it actually beats a lot of those classic ones in scale. Because you effectively have four different uh, flanks that uh, that you have different factions holding off. Any uh, any units uh, from those particular routes, if any story characters die, they are just dead. They don't even get a uh, uh, they don't even get the option to be taken out of there. Which I was perfectly fine with uh, with uh, uh, hanged men, uh, uh, lady faction, what's her face, uh, getting killed off there for the fact that she was immortal that one time earlier in the story. <laughs> Like, dude, it was so cool. It was so, so damn cool. Have I spoiled a lot of things? Uh, badly. I have not given justice to the writing in this thing whatsoever. It, aside from some awkward translation, it is some genuinely good writing. Actually, I, I will say, one of the funniest things to me... <laughs> uh, I forget what the meme was specifically, <laughs> but there was some meme a while ago where somebody's dying and then they just start expositing for like 30 minutes over the uh, social political ramifications of their particular situation that was this i, I just gotta show you <laughs> i gotta show you this because it was hilarious <laughs> just it's in two two times speed for some why is this in two times speed just turn that off there we go um i'm just gonna let this play because this mess was hilarious <laughs> um uh, so oh uh, so yeah most uh most of the writing was genuinely heartfelt uh, most of the uh, situations were uh, were really darn cool uh, the uh, again the number of map mechanics consistently going on was really remarkable I I don't think I've actually seen a, a kind of SRPG of this style whatsoever that actually stuck to its guns so hard in terms of mission variety. I mean, they did not stop with that mission variety at any time during this game. Uh, for the sake of context, why that's impressive. This is, in my particular route, it gives you like XCOM 2 style stats. Why do I say 2? It's just XCOM style stats at the end of your playthrough. Um, but they but they actually uh, give you stats over all your battles and whatever else. Uh, you know, whether you took any resets, of course not. Uh, whether they, whether you, uh, uh, you know, whether you took any, uh, any extra fights or what have you, how many weeks it took you. Uh, in my case, it was, I think it was 56 weeks? Might have been 54. I don't know. Some, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, uh, and then uh, it was 154 battles. For the sake of context, uh, the fastest route, if I'm not mistaken, for Tactics Ogre is uh, 62 battles. Uh, so there is there is a lot of fights in this, and granted, the fights for the most part are not as long. Uh, most of them are quick, uh, quick little skirmishes. Um, but man, oh man, like the, towards the tail end there, we're talking like hour long plus fights. That one fight that I was mentioning in the mines there, uh, that took me the better part of yesterday. Like we were waiting in lines a lot. Uh, uh, we uh, we have this uh, uh, this pass to uh, to a water park that we go to every now and then. Um, and during that, during that time, a lot of time while just waiting in line, I was going and just doing that fight over the course of the entire day. <laughs> so it's wild, uh, it's wild just how long that one was. Uh, the, uh, the final fight there, again, had just unique mechanics out the ears. Uh, it was basically a 40v5, <laughs> where, uh, where you've got constant, uh, buffs and debuffs flying around for the, uh, for the different teams. I don't know if the way that she responds to that fight is any different from the way that you do it, but, uh, either way, it was just really cool to have a situation where it's like, hey, guess what? My entire team's immune to debuffs. You remember all those, uh, fire and poison bombs I've been worrying about being too close to? Well, now this entire map's being on fire. <laughs> So that was pretty awesome. Like, what a great way to end it. Uh, that you've got all these different choices for uh, for different uh, kind of uh, blessings to throw on your team for different uh, different reasons. On top of that, I gotta appreciate in the ending uh, that they actually uh, put together a little uh, kind of collage of your favorite units, and they're like, oh, just take a quiet moment to remember these units, and you're never gonna see them again. <laughs> it's like, this is the end of this timeline. You're gonna get warped back to the... Uh, 
to the thing that's considered your sanctuary as far as the game is concerned, but as far as I'm concerned, that is just your own personal hell. <laughs> but either way, um, it was just great to see that. So that ending, like, <laughs> look at... <laughs> Look at this, this speech right here. And this, in order to satisfy the populace, they, they, they buy for power. Outside of this, everything is but a trivial matter. Um, and the light of sanctuary is no different. Like, unfortunately, this is how the world has always been. It has never feared otherwise. <laughs> like, okay, lady, you're on your deathbed. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, but yeah, no, we're, we're just going to go ahead and uh, skip it. But, like, this goes on for some time. <laughs> That was one of the few moments where I saw where they're like, okay, we got a bunch of exposition we gotta dump right here, right now, you know? Um, so, oh, uh, dude, I, I loved it. Uh, that was, that was incredible, especially for what's ostensibly a free game. That was incredible. Absolutely incredible. And I, I was planning to go and replay it a, a few more times as well. Um, now I will say, though, uh, one thing to, to mention here is the key thing. So, People have mentioned that apparently, if you're going back and kind of speedrunning through the game, you end up burning through keys a lot more. Um, I could see that happening, uh, depending on how you do stuff. Apparently, so the the um, uh, the day that uh, or, or sorry, the uh, the way that uh, that I heard it mentioned uh, was that you essentially used these to unlock different routes or what have you, um, or to uh, to unlock the ability to reach different locations. I don't think that's actually the case. So. Uh, what I think happened, um, and again, this is specifically towards uh, Legman's review there. I think what happened, there's a lot of conversation things that you can do in, like, in the story itself. Uh, in order to go and, let's say, build up additional facilities for certain factions, or to uh, just kind of boost your reputation with them in some way. Like in my personal case, uh, as far as Samantha switching sides... Um, I had gone and built additional houses for them, had built an additional, uh, kind of, I think it was like some church facility or, there, or something they were building for them. I uh, had recruited, uh, three of their, uh, sort of, uh, named, uh, uh, named side characters and what have you. Uh, rescued several of them, had gone out of my way to, uh, uh, to go and help out that faction wherever possible. And, aside from the occasional just taking a week off to go do some mercenary stuff or whatnot to let the team rest... Um, generally speaking, that was the kind of route that I was going down, and, again, Faction Buddy survived, good ending achieved, as far as I can tell, unless there's a somehow better ending than that, um, it seems like you can actually get that on your first playthrough, you just kind of gotta, you know, roleplay the game, so to speak. Um, so, to me, that was definitely a lot more reasonable than many that I've seen out there, uh, as far as understanding your, um, um, and understanding, uh, what the hell was I going for? I completely lost my train of thought. That thing derailed and went straight off a cliff. I don't know. Hang on. Quick sip of coffee. Hmm. All right. Anyway. Where will fate, fate lead you this time? I don't know. Apparently we're going to burn that same thing to the ground, but we'll find out. But the way that I see it, uh, this is just kind of modifiers for your, uh, for your playthrough here. Um, so whether you want to start off with, uh, let's see. Starts from the day you come to, eh, it'll be easier to get interested in people. Um, so these seem just like regular New Game Plus options to me, so I'm completely okay with this. Um, I don't know exactly how far this, uh, this goes in terms of modifications, but I'm seeing a lot of things on this logo that could potentially light up. I will find that out in just a moment, but I want to see this Astral Path stuff. Uh, what's all this? Uh, let's see. Get an additional augment slot when starting a new cycle. I don't know which augments they mean specifically. Let's see. Jason nodes are not activated. Gain additional character slots or gain additional augment slot. Um, I mean, I, I kind of want more units, to be honest. More units, always good in a game that is all about units. Oh, we have to get... Okay. How many times are you expected to play through this, then? Huh. Okay, so. Uh... Okay, so we get one of those. What's this do? Uh, gain additional backtrack attempts. I don't even care about that, though. Can I just do this other stuff? Like, I've, I've never... Okay, there was actually one time uh, that I used the backtrack mechanic uh, for the spy mission. So there's a puzzle mission uh, partway through where you're just uh, kind of tailing a guy. Come to think of it, this is kind of the strategy equivalent of classic uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto or something like that in terms of the number of varieties. <laughs> missions. Um, but no, in that particular case, there was, um, 
Uh, there was one where you had to find a bunch of very specific uh, tiles to stand on, because uh, you had to stay exactly two tiles away from uh, several different patrol routes. Uh, so it was just kind of this weird stealth mission kind of situation. Now uh, what's this? Uh, start with five additional timber. Oh boy, we're investing into sticks, guys. <laughs> um, I mean, fair enough, I guess. I don't know what choice there is here. This feels like it's... Oh, here, here's some stuff. Uh, unlocks divination feature? Okay. Nope. Still have to get there, apparently. Uh, that That's weird. I don't know why they would do it that way. Uh, increases health by 5%. Okay. We were already doing fine, but if you say so, what's this? Uh, three additional crystal dust. That does seem like something that would actually affect stuff, because that crystal dust was uh, what ended up unlocking some of that faction stuff. We ended up having enough, because I didn't pay attention to the game's mechanics, and didn't know what you could actually use that stuff for. So, <laughs> so go figure. My not paying attention to stuff may have gotten us a good ending. Um, increases healing done by all Watcher units. Sure, why not? Uh, what about you? Archers? Spiral of Destinies with 10 additional Luxite Dust. Okay, dokie. Uh, what's this? Recruited Axemen in the Tavern. Really? We had to go through all this to, to get an Axeman? So you start with a thousand additional funds, probably very good for training. And what's this? Start with uh, 200 additional funds? Sure. Um, okay, so it just gets slightly easier, I suppose. So, alright, what do these modes look like? Uh, so, people say this will be easier. Uh, reinforcements from the order will be easier. Okie dokie. I guess we're just going to go order this time, because we kind of blame them for the universe. Um, all right. Who do we want to bring along? Uh, oh, these, oh, these, oh, right, I forgot these people existed. Hold on. Uh, yeah, this guy, I, I could have used somebody generic this whole time. Interesting. I mean, <laughs> okay, we're going to get rid of this guy because he sucks. Uh, we're going to get rid of, uh, you because same reason, uh, but, uh, but yeah, King's Army Archer was actually a mainstay throughout my entire thing. Uh, Pikeman and Guard also similarly were there the whole time, so good stuff there. Get rid of Crimson Falcon, and probably get the Saxman. Sure, there we go. I didn't know you could customize your starting party, that's neat. Um, I thought that you were just kind of forced into whoever you had. Um, but yeah, I really loved the uh, the different kinds of builds you could do for your units. Like, at this point, that party's deleted, um, but like on the King's Army Archer, I got a training thing for building a box, and you get a, a damage advantage when you're going and sitting at higher elevation. So you could effectively use what is more or less an action move uh, to go and put down a box, stand on top of the box for bonus damage. <laughs> like, um, the fact that you could actually spec into a box build just warmed my idiotic heart. <laughs> <laughs> it just made me happy. Um, so yeah, love that. Absolutely love that. Um, has undergone some fluctuations. Do you wish to proceed? Sure. Yeah, why not? You start off with more money this time and units that don't have a dumb haircut. Fantastic. Um, so now we actually can ignore them. Um, although now we can't send them off to go do menial labor anymore, so that's kind of whatever. Huh. Anyway. So... Oh, wait. Game of chess achieved? Whoops. Uh, okay, I'm gonna have to go back and watch whatever that scene was. Um, so we've already become the leader there. Where are we at? So we're supposed to do something in Wave Run. It's been a month since the Wave Run City incident, and Counterinsurgency was still deadlocked. Oh, I see. So we actually start off from this point. We don't. Uh, so, cool. Okay, we start off from halfway through the game then. That's better than I thought. Nice. I can see why uh, why they would have had an issue with. Uh, uh, with uh, running through keys then, because, yeah, this is really when stuff starts picking up. So, first of all, glad with that being the place to start from. All right, let's go ahead and skip through this, because we've already seen it. But one thing I will mention, uh, we'll go back to the other mode right now. Uh, so, apparently, we're just going down that particular route. Fantastic. Uh, yeah, I actually have no issues with it starting right here, because this is really when stuff starts, uh, uh, starts going. And, apparently, let's see, bounce, heavy axe... Uh, oh. Oh, we got a bunch of decent stuff right off the bat. Uh, so I guess the Union are going to be the good weapon people. Um, attacks even more 20%. Or... Um, oh. God, 
God, talk about a weirdly specific bonus. <laughs> yeah, precision forge for sure. Got to be very precise to pull that off. When attacking enemies with movement down, physical in attack increased by 15%. Okay, then. <laughs> Just uh, keep your oddly specific bonus to yourself, yeah? Uh, let's see. Sources, score chat. I believe this was one of the better ones. Yeah, magic defense by 20%. Yes, please. Um, all right. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm perfectly happy with that being a, a starting point there. I will mention, as far as keys are concerned, I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, um, but as far as uh, playing through multiple different times, um, as somebody said, uh, uh, upping your war crimes to industrial uh, grade levels, at the moment, I spent one, I have either one or two, I think, in the bank, and then I got uh, 24 available from the shiny rocks, um, and this is... Uh, so this is like with uh, with all the dailies and stuff. I haven't touched any of the monetization stuff whatsoever. So that is more than enough for multiple different playthroughs. Uh, if we're assuming one key per unlock on that menu, that's a solid more than half of it already. Um, so basically, if you're not doing the mobile game stuff, you, this is just single player for all intents and purposes as far as I'm concerned. Like I've heard some people say that you're going and burning through them a lot faster, and at this point, um, at this point I could see that being a thing, but I have basically no interest in doing the uh, uh, the mobile game side of things. Like, I was planning to cover some of that section, but I'm never going and using the summon feature whatsoever, because that, as far as I see it, is more stuff that can be used for keys, and that's the only thing I'm here for, you know? Uh, the Luxite stuff doesn't expire, the keys do. So, you know, might as well use it for that. Uh, basically, I got 24 keys in the bank. <laughs> so, uh, so that's good for me. Um, so yeah, that's kind of my thoughts on the, on the ending there. Incredible game, uh, incredibly well done. Uh, basically, it for me personally, it kind of fills the slot of being a f kind of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance three of sorts uh, with interesting character builds, but very similar vibes in terms of having a lot of uh, a lot of mission variety, an insane amount of mission variety. Uh, I would say, as far as the genre goes, I again, it's basically bar none. I have not seen an SRPG with this much mission variety ever. Um, I mean, hell, I, the first thing that came to mind was, you know, comparing this with something like XCOM 2, but even then, like, it's not even close. Um, like, even, uh, even FFTA 2 did not have this much unique mechanics to its missions and such. Uh, it's funny, I, I always want to say stuff and then such at the same time, and then stutch is what ends up coming out. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, so yeah, as far as the writing went, outside of a few moments of confusion, it genuinely felt really darn good, um, and as far as still having the, uh, the willingness to go into New Game Plus, uh, starting off New Game Plus with exactly the point that you want to start it off at, uh, starting off with, uh, with a custom teams, like, the, the nice little callbacks to the fact that they're like, here's your, you know, here's this collage of your old team, and now they're gone, go make a new one, I, like, I love that, uh, as far as the thematic, uh, stuff goes here, um, so yeah, I'm probably gonna go and uh, do a few more, uh, a few more quick playthroughs of the single player thing. Hell, I haven't, I haven't even really touched on the difficulty, have I? So yeah, there were a lot of moments as far as the difficulty, um, where there were way more difficult fights to go take on. But I do appreciate that there did seem to be a decent bit of role playing involved in those, uh, in those mission choices. Um, actually, let's go to the thing see if we can maybe see some of those. Um, because as far as the quests and stuff are concerned, it, there's constantly things going on, and it feels to me uh, like there's like there's maybe some impact happening from some of these. Like many of them do seem fairly standard. Um, uh, but for example, uh, for example, you'll notice every now and then that there's some mission to do something that feels like it would be a bit more impactful, uh, like you know going and taking out a lab or something along those lines, or stopping a particular unit from doing something, and they're just marked as an everyday quest, and I wonder if maybe that had some impact on how the story played out. I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, overall, I, I loved this, man. Um, plan to keep on uh, doing those other few routes here, kind of see how they play out, uh, see if I can figure out what's different specifically. Um, I will say, when you go back and replay uh, uh, situations where there's dialogue, it doesn't feel like the dialogue changes that much. Um, like, it feels it's primarily there for role-playing reasons, maybe. Um, but as far as everything else goes, like, whether you keep people alive, how much you do that, how much you protect people, or, or what uh, places you show up at, I feel like there's more of that reputation system going on there. I don't know for sure, though. Um, 
So yeah, that's a big old ramble on this whole thing. Was it good? Hell yeah, it was good. That, like, easily, easily up there as far as those RPGs go. If we ignore the mobile game stuff, it's like, it, it's definitely up there with the grades at this point. Um, as far as the mobile game stuff, though, that's what's a bit of a bummer. That being said, considering what they're going for here, if we're considering this like an early access kind of thing, if all that mobile game stuff eventually funds the route for this to just become a standalone experience, easily one of the greats. Um, so, yeah, that's about that. So, I gotta get going. You all have yourselves a good one. Thank you for stopping by, and I'll see you in the next one.